All right, so this week, IBM hits the news uh, for an acquisition that it's doing with Confluent. So it's spending $11 billion to buy a data AI company. It's not buying a chip company. It's not buying a hardware company. And I think this is actually a pretty good move on IBM's part. Uh, the thing about IBM is that they have a cloud division. Yes, they actually do have a cloud division. So if you look at this graph between all of the cloud players, you can see IBM right over here, right over here. Uh, at the bottom, 2%. So it's it's measly when compared to the likes of AWS, Azure, Google Cloud. But obviously that's changing. They IBM want to have a bigger presence, especially in the cloud, and now especially with AI. So they're buying these companies to sort of give them access into this market. And I think it's important to note that uh, Confluence is isn't just any other company. It's it's actually quite a unique company. So if you look at this excerpt from Wikipedia, Confluent came about from LinkedIn. And what Confluent does is basically build out a platform that's you know that data streams, that streams data for large enterprises. It can be for startups as well. But the whole premise, the whole idea behind Confluent is this Kafka product right here. So this Kafka product was developed in-house at LinkedIn. Uh, and it says here, Kafka was originally developed at LinkedIn and was subsequently open sourced in early 2011. Jay Krebs, Neha, and Jun helped co-create Kafka. Graduation from the Apache incubator occurred in 23rd October 2012. Jay Krebs chose a name of the software author after the author Franz Kafka because it's the system optimized for writing and he liked Kafka's work. So generally, you know, the idea here is that these large organizations, especially with LinkedIn, when you're getting messages, updates, notifications, uh, you know, you can see the feed coming through. All that relies on data pipelining. And there's a lot of data when it comes to LinkedIn, not, not just LinkedIn, but imagine any company that you've worked at or you know of that is giving you data. Big chances are they're either using Kafka or they're using a derivative of Kafka or they're using some sort of version of Kafka in the back end, right? So which they've probably developed in-house. But the whole premise of Kafka is to give you this sort of real-time updates of data. So if you look at this diagram over here, this sort of gives you a, a better picture of what Kafka looks like. So the before image is when you have all these sort of services trying to get access to data all at once, all from of all of these from all of these other services. The problem though is that each service has to then talk to every other service in that ecosystem, which becomes really, really complicated. But with Kafka, the after picture on the right, you can see that Kafka sort of acts as the middle person, acts as the middleware between the applications over here, as well as the consumer and, and all the other services it needs to talk to. So it becomes this like nice sort of ner central nervous system where you have access to a lot of the data that these services need. And so this is why Kafka is so powerful. Another example here is how Kafka is just so powerful in just the amount of data it's able to produce and consume at any given time. So having this sort of like layer here is really important. And I think what IBM saw in Confluent is that this is going to be really, really powerful when it comes to AI. Now, another thing that people don't realize about Kafka is that it's actually open source. So you don't have to use Confluent. You can basically just download Apache Kafka, which is the open source version of Kafka, and you can use, deploy that on your own machine and your own servers. The problem though is that it's not managed at all. So you have to do all the heavy lifting, you have to set everything up, you have to manage all the fault tolerances, you have to add all of these additional services on top, which just becomes a complete nightmare. So what Confluent has done is that, yes, they have the Apache uh, version, the open source version of Kafka, but then they've put a sort of like an enterprise layer on top of Kafka. And that is basically what Confluent is. So if you're a company or you're, you're a startup that wants to use Kafka as a service, you don't have to go in and download it and redeploy it all over again. You can just talk to Confluent. They give you access to their managed service. You just have to subscribe to Confluent and they give you access to the entire data streaming platform. And on top of this, you have everything in terms of governance, processing, connecting, 
you know, table flows, streaming, all of those services are then baked into the Confluent offering rather than Apache Kafka, which don't really have any of these features in place. And the other thing to note here is just how fast Confluent has grown over the past 10 years. So since its inception in 2014, that's when the company got started, it's been able to really do well as a company because at the end of the day, it's providing this really, really powerful service. And, and the fact that you can see the, and the amount of revenue going up is just an indication of how powerful uh, Confluent is and how popular it's become in sort of this sort of enterprise cloud community, right? Netflix uses it, Uber uses it. Anything that requires data streaming probably uses Confluent in the background. So this is sort of the reason why IBM have been so gung-ho about Confluent. And I think the reason why IBM want to acquire Confluent, especially, and I think it's probably a discount to be honest, is the fact that the TAM for this is going to be north of $100 billion over the next five to 10 years, probably even worth you know, $200, $300 billion in my opinion, just because the fact that Confluent is dealing with something so important right now, and that's data. If you can get access to data and you can stream data in real time, that is the most important thing right now. When it comes to AI, especially agentic AI, when you're trying to do things with data in real time to give you real-time updates, streaming platforms like Confluent become extremely important. And IBM know this, and that is exactly why they're sort of eyeing Confluent, how they can incorporate Confluent into their own ecosystem as well. Because if you see what this looks like in the long term, if Confluent is here, you have companies that are basically building the application layer and the AI layer. And so what happens is that if you can provide some sort of data layer that can inject itself into the AI layer, imagine the types of applications you can build. And so what we're going to be seeing in this sort of long-term thing, this long tail uh, expansion of AI is that there's going to be a lot of startups that are going to use Kafka. They're going to use Confluent as a sort of a backbone for their entire data pipeline. They're going to be streaming data, they're going to be accessing the data. And the other thing is being able to adapt the AI to data as it comes in. And so this is why Confluent has become so popular, has become so powerful, and that's why IBM basically wants it. And, and if you think this is IBM's first rodeo, it's not. They've done this in the past really well. They've done Red Hat in 2019 for 34 billion. 2024 was HashiCorp and 2025 now is Confluent, right? So you can see what they're building over time, the operating system, the control plane, and now the sort of the data streaming ecosystem as well. So IBM are sort of like building out their war chest of what this potentially could look like in the long term. And they're not fools. They know exactly what they're doing. They may not be the biggest players in the space right now. But they have an eye for talent. They have an eye for very, very powerful products. And I really think that IBM are really playing the long game here because they're not just, as I mentioned, buying chips anymore. They're not, they're not in that game. They don't want to be a frontier model company like OpenAI or XAI or Anthropic. They want to be the plumbing of AI. They want to build all the pipes that comes with AI. And so they can see exactly where this is going in the long term. They can see that startups, corporations, enterprises, they're going to be relying on a lot of this data and infrastructure. So at the end of the day, IBM have just done a really good move here. It's going to be interesting to see where this goes. No doubt that Google, Amazon, and all the other cloud providers are going to be providing their own uh, their own data streaming platforms as well, especially if you've got Gemini working in tandem with Google Cloud or OpenAI working in tandem with Azure. So it's going to be an interesting landscape over the next couple of years. But I think generally, IBM have just pulled it off, pulled off another one. Uh, so kudos to them. In any case, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, if you like the content, give it a like and subscribe. I do have a newsletter if you like it. This is where I go into more detail in any of the news that I share with you guys, uh, but also has deep dives, essays, um, you know, conversations and podcasts, field guides, and everything in between. So, so yeah, if you like the content, just subscribe, share it, and I'll see you next time.